Hi, Kim from Audio Talk, and happy fourth, everyone. Now, a woofer. Isn't music just about like having fun and you know, louder music is more fun? What I've found myself in lots of times is that the ultimate fun typically, or at least many times, ends up in a deadly wounded uh, woofer, meaning that it has that sound to it if any sound at all you're looking around find a price for an original woofer and it's outrageous or it's not even available anymore it happens all the time and so you're looking for an alternative a diy driver which could be a fantastic idea but just like you were to get a transplant of some kind for your body you need to account for a bunch of things for it to really work and uh, that's what this video is about, is to make you a speaker doctor on replacing a woofer. So the first challenge is the physical size. We tend to think an eight inch, a 10 inch, so forth, is it eight inch or 10 inch? But really it's just a group of drivers. The chassis, the actual body, won't well, let's bring in a woofer. Here we have a, a five, five and a quarter inch, right? And so, is chassis you know its body its basket is is this out here and that differs quite a bit within the sizes so if you have an eight inch woofer your chassis size of this differs a lot and you know a lot of times you'll have like a routed out uh, part of the of your cabinet where this fits precisely down into so this diameter right here is fairly important. It could also be that your shape is pin cushioned, which is like all half round, half square, and you will need to consider that measurement as well. The other measurement will be on the inside, the part that actually goes into the hole into the cabinet. So those two diameters you will need to really look at in the um, specifications of the woofer that you're interested in and then measure them up on your original driver and your um, your cabinet your your box uh, uh, that you're putting it into but that's just the, the beginning here but I mean you could just throw something in there but that's how you get like a crap result uh, you basically are bound to have a crap result if you just throw something in there just based on the physical size but that will definitely make it a lot easier if it fits in there uh, and you don't have to use uh, tools uh, like a router or a saw or something like that to make it fit. Um, and then you have impedance. Impedance is the resistance on the coil. So that's between your plus and minus here, right? So if you still have the other woofer on, in the other speaker fresh, you can measure that with a multimeter, like an ohm meter, like set that to ohms and measure through here. You'll have what's called a DCR from that. That's not exactly the impedance. So, but to give you an idea, if you have an, a, a DCR, you know, the resistance here of like six to eight ohms, you have an eight ohm speaker. And if you have one that's like 4.5 to six, it's a six ohm. And if you have one that's a three to four, you have a four ohm speaker. So that's a give and take on the impedance. If you do not have that, you know, if, you, if both of them went out, which happens, uh, you would take um, and look at the specifications from the factory of the, the whole speaker. And if you have one woofer in that uh, speaker, you can assume that that's the same as the, the entire system. So if your speaker is the entire speaker reading off the back of the manual says eight ohms, that's what you can count on that the woofer would be. That will be a de determined, uh, determined by the woofer. Typically the filter is not changing the impedance in between the, the crossover filter inside, the electronics inside of the speaker. So you can pretty much count on that. If you have two woofers in there, you're a little bit more, uh, it's, it starts to get more tricky. Uh, I won't get into that in this video. Please comment down below uh, here in the comment section 
and I will, if that's something that somebody is out there interested in, I will make a video on specifically what to do when you got two woofers. So, okay. So that was the impedance, um, sensitivity. That is how efficient the speaker driver is. And again, the woofer is kind of the basis that sets the pace of the sensitivity of the entire speaker because the tweeter and the mid range are much easier to obtain high efficiency on. The woofer is the one that's hard to make efficient and still have deep bass. So that one will be the determine to determining size of your sensitivity. So whatever your manual says that the entire speaker has, you know, as your manual from whatever brand Bowles and Wilkins, uh, Snell, whatever you got, uh, would be, be telling you basically what the sensitivity of the woofer would need to be. So that is a data that is uh, given to you in decibels, dB. So that one also needs to be matching your new speaker. And if it's lower, you should expect the sound you know, to be more thin. And if you choose one that's slightly higher, it will be more dominant in the bass. Um, but that's not all. You, there's more factors to it, but you know, on that scale of that particular subject, that will be the case. Effect, power, of course, it has an effect. You know, that has a, a, a say, but you just need to be somewhat in there. If it's 30% off, 40% off, fine. And it's a little bit hard to be specific on how much power you really need from the woofer looking at the entire speaker. But if you assume that the woofer is supposed to take any grunt of the entire uh, power, uh, that the, your whole speaker is is uh, is in the data, say let's say a hundred watt uh, RMS for example. Well, then pick a woofer that's a hundred watt RMS or somewhat around there, knowing that the difference would will make it go into a certain direction. You have seventy watt RMS speaker instead of the hundred watt. Well, you're gonna have a little bit less, but it's not a huge difference because. Three decibel change is twice the power. So if you have a 100 watt speaker and you go to a 200 watt speaker, well then you can, you can put twice as much power into it, but you will actually only gain three decibels, which is just audible to your ear. Just, just audible. You actually need 10 decibels more to have it twice as loud. So the difference is not as big as you would think between like say 80 and 100 watts. Here comes one that is a luxury to get uh, the information on. And that's if your, your uh, manual has the crossover frequencies. Now this is a little bit tricky one, you know. So if it has that, it would be great to look at that. Your woofer from the, you know, your DIY woofer would typically come with a chart and it shows, you know, some kind of response. If the response all of a sudden goes up, like, like wildly, like whoop, that's a sign of what's called a breakup. That's when the cone no longer can hold itself stable because it's moving too fast and it would have this wobble and that doesn't sound very good. It makes a lot of sound from the actual material and uh, it's have a tendency to sound harsh and depending on the material, it'll be like aluminum cone when that's doing that sounds really bad, for example, or par paper, it can be sounding cheap, uh, that sort of thing. So if you have that data, by all means use it. It's a little technical uh to to figure that one out i realize that so it's down the list but then we come to, i left the most complex one of them all which is actually really important and you know how some a bass from a speaker sounds muddy 
and other ones can sound extremely thin, like almost transparent. Well, that's the Q factor of the system. So that's how much that when your woofer is giving a throw out or in, doesn't matter, how much is like lingering at that beat. And you would think that you want it to be as firm as absolutely possible. But the thing is that a Q factor can get so low that you start to lose power and, and it rolls off too fast. So it becomes, not only does it, it doesn't do the whole throw if you dampen it too much, which would be a low Q factor. So you need to pr provoke the speaker driver to have a little bit more linger, a little bit more energy to be pressed out to make the movement acoustically on most speaker drivers. Right. So I know this, this, this one here is a little hairy, but that here is where you really get the benefit of paying attention to, to, to this video and to, to do the due diligence of going through this to find a replacement. So, so there's a couple of tools that we need to, to figure this out, you know. Uh, what's important here is the cabinet, your, your box. You need to measure height, width, and depth of the, of the entire cabinet, right? And then you need to measure the thickness of the walls. Now you can calculate um, how much volume, how many uh, cubic foot you have inside of this box, because you're gonna need that now. You're gonna need that to calculate. So you need the volume of air inside, okay? And then you need to look at, do you have a port in there? Do you have a tube, like a, like a tube going into the box? that is creating a resonance if you do. And so there you need the length of it and you need the width, the diameter inside of it, the cross uh, measurement. And those two is, your, um, your, is, is determining the, the resonance frequency of that system. Okay. With that, um, you, you, you already had the physical measurement, you had the impedance, and now you maybe have found like a couple of uh, woofers that, uh, you're, that from the earlier measurements that we talked about. Now you need to put them to, through the final test, which is the calculation, how this is gonna work in terms of it being either muddy or, or uh, too transparent. So I know this is a lot of work, but this is how you get the good result, you know? And um, so, I created a very, very simple software um, where you, uh, it's called Speaker Calc. It's, you can download it for free. It's down in, uh, the, um, in the description here on, here on YouTube. And um, you can download that for free and you have very simple entries on it. And so the, the last two tabs in, in, the, in the program or in the little so piece of uh, software, uh, the second last one is for closed cabinets is if you don't have a, a tube you know inside and uh, and the uh, very last one is for the ported box which is for the one with the little tube and so what you do is that you take the speaker driver and then that piece of software will be asking you for the TL small parameters that you will find on that DIY page where you found this woofer so if you find a Costereo sub um, uh, woofer, I'm sorry that very often they do not uh, give up this data, which is um, you know too bad. But that's um, you really do need it to figure out, and even for a car, you will need it really to figure out how to create a good box. You you need that data, but for some reason, very often it's never there. So, but um, okay. So QTS, VAS, FS, XMAX, and SD, those are the 
data that you need from that those TL small parameters that you would find uh, on like whatever place that you're you're going you have found this this speaker driver it will have this and you can put that into all this and press calculate and it will come out with a volume and a port length and and diameter and so from that you need to be somewhere around where uh, you know uh, where your uh, speaker is within like maybe 30 percent and so feel free also to contact me there in the comment section if you come that far and you are not sure if it fits exactly where, where you want to be and you have the volume of your original speaker you have put in these two small parameters because there is other ways to align this this is like a very basic uh, type um, it's called a Bonnerworth alignment which is very very common a good hi-fi sound it gives good energy and um, uh, when you use this calculation so um, so that would be the way to to determine if if uh, how well if you're somewhat within the calculation comes out with something that looks like your system you're on in uh, in good shape for the uh, for the tonal balance and for the um, uh, for what's it called for how thick the bass is because that's that's a very important one for the experience so I know that's a that's probably a lot longer than than you thought this was going to be but this is like how to get it precise I mean you choose to use some of these you know but you know that every time you're diminishing your chance of a uh, of a great result here so by by not taking into account all of them so I hope you got something out of uh, out of this I know that was a lot but um, all right well again happy fourth everyone and take care and have fun with your projects. Bye.